G'day guys. In today's video, I've got a Nitro N5-620. So this particular one, where are we? There we go. And this particular one here, I'm gonna be opening it up and installing a RTX, or a RX 6600 XT. To get into this particular machine, we're gonna to have to undo two screws. One here and one here. And that will enable us to get into the machine from there. So undo that. One and two. We're now in. Now what can we see from here? What I've already discovered in this particular one is we have a, I believe it's a 500 watt gold plus power supply. This machine right here. So it's a 500 watt plus, or 500 watt 80 plus power supply, which means we're essentially can put in an RX 6600 or a 6600 XT, which is right at the limit for it, which is what I'm going to be doing. We have an eight pin, an eight pin and a six pin. You can also potentially add up to two SATA hard drives in here. Right now, we're using a single NVMe down here which is upgradable. So we have one NVMe SSD, and also there is a second slot on here, down here, to add another one as well. So you can potentially have two NVMe drives in this one. Also the motherboard itself does support up to four RAM sticks, which is very handy, especially if you want to upgrade. To upgrade, all we should have to do is hit the notch under, or oh, there's a notch at the top, push it out. Same with the one down the bottom push it towards me, and then from there, we can simply lift it out. This currently does have eight gig of 3200 megahertz RAM, so you could potentially fill that up with all eights and get 32 gig of RAM in there in total. Right now, we're in dual configuration mode, so we've got two sticks in there, which is exactly what you want. If your machine only has a single eight, I'd recommend adding another eight in there. And I'm pretty sure we're using a, I think this one's got a 10400F, in here, I'm gonna GTX, I think it's a 1650 if memory serves me correct on this particular one. If you do wanna change the case, I wouldn't really recommend it, as the front USBs down here actually protrude through the case to the front of the tower. So if you did replace it, you would lose access to these ports over here. Also, you can upgrade the power supply if you do so choose. Um, if you upgrade the power supply, Pretty much everyone else is still going to connect. As I say that, I'm looking at this one here, which I think leads off to one of these SATA cables. But I'm gonna proceed and change the graphics card here to one of these. You could potentially change it to an, uh, a GT, an RTX 3060 or, so, or a 3050. You could pretty much go a tri-fan card in here, or be very close to. So what I've got here in my hand is a, a RTX 2080 Ti, and as you see, this beefcake card doesn't have much chance getting in there. So as I said, tri-fan, no, make it a dual fan setup, or else you're not gonna be fitting the whole card in the case. So to change over the graphics card, I should be able to take this bracket down after I undo the screw down here, just a standard Phillips head screw. That comes out, folds down. This little bit comes off, like so. This is to reduce sag, which this particular card isn't really gonna be getting at. I'll push that down and pull that up. You see we have one very, very tiny graphics card. And we're a GTX 1650 four gig doesn't require any extra power, so very low wattage. The performance jump I'm expecting going to the 6600 is gonna be quite large, or the 6600 XT, which if I line it up here, I'm gonna to have to cut the cord on this, I reckon. No, wiggle it forward, there we go, line it up. 
push down and that should slot into position like that. As you can see the card goes here. We're getting pretty close to the front. So from here, I should be able to fold this up. Put that single screw back in the midsection over here. Like that. Little bracket bit. I'm not sure if that's going to fit. Ah, uh, whatever. Kind of does. It's not really helping much with the weight of sag. It's not really designed for this card. But we'll put that back there. Next up, I need to cut the cable here. You plug in the auxiliary 6 pin or 8 pin. But yeah, as I was saying, if, if you were to upgrade to something more powerful, like a 6700 or a, potentially a third, most a high end 3060, you will have to change the power supply because it won't have enough wattage. So, this was about the biggest upgrade this machine could do without changing the 500 watt power supply in here as it falls within the requirements of the 6600 XT. So that would be my go-to recommendation to upgrade the Acer Nitro. Now just have to be careful those fans aren't gonna clip. There we go, that's good. We're screwed in the front. We're right to put the cover back on here. Once I've got this back together, it will need the graphics drivers reinstalled. If you're upgrading the RAM, just simply add more RAM. You don't have to do anything fancy after that. And if you've added the hard drive for extra storage, then from there I would recommend to I would recommend to go into the device manager, and from there you should be able to format the drive and have it functioning from there. Anyway, I hope this helps with the Acer Nitro N50. I'm gonna catch you guys later. Bye.